friends indeed. Since I'm fighting a pot charge for the ages by launching the trial of the millennium in the Mexican courthouse, I will use the evidence and testimony against me to prove to any and all beyond any doubt whatsoever that it is not against the law to grow pot, deal pot, and tote pot. I have tricked the evil empire into busting me so that I can put the government industrial complex on trial before a jury of our peeps for its crimes against humanity, violations of our civil rights, and wanton desecration of nature. Don't miss the forests for the pot fields. Potheads are the new nigger in society. I'm no more of a criminal than a colored guy was for sitting at a lunch counter, or a negress for riding at the front of the bus, or blacks and whites who are mating in the Jim Crow South. If you don't believe that the plight of the pothead should be compared to Negroes who suffered discrimination and annihilation, take it up with the government industrial complex. They're the ones that tell us that pot is a civil rights issue because both pot and interracial marriage is on the same list of victimless crimes. That's right. I'm not being charged with committing a crime. I'm being charged with violating the safety and the dignity of the state according to a code. Just the way there was a code to enforce segregation rules even though the state broke the law to violate the rights of a citizen to do so. You the sheeple, that's E-W-E the sheeple, that are out there campaigning to legalize pot are pulling the wool over your own eyes while lambs are led to the slaughter. The law does not need to be changed. It needs to be followed by the legal industrial complex. Pot is illegal because we the peeps are being criminalized by a political policy known as prohibition. Like it was during Jim Crow, our inalienable human and civil rights are being violated. It is not unlawful to grow, deal, and tote pot because we aren't violating anyone's constitutional rights. That's the law. So after I spent 11 months posting episodes of me smoking pot, dealing pot, and growing pot across the Facebook walls of the mayor, the district attorney, the sheriff, and the commissioner of Homeland Security for Tennessee, right here from my parlor in the hood of Memphrica, home of America's dumbest police force in the violent crime capital. I was finally arrested. Now I have the distinct pleasure of putting the legal system on trial in America's most corrupt courthouse. This won't be the first time that I have danced with the evil empire in the dank moonlight. When he dared to operate America's most 420 friendly nightclub, the kingpin Thorne Peters was railroaded into jail by the sheriff and DA of Memphis with falsified reports, planted evidence, and perjured testimony. The kingpin turned down a 30-day deal and waited 19 months behind bars to take them to trial where he faced 15 years. On 4-20-2011, at 4-20, he returned to the courthouse, toking on an apple, to take a protest bus to fight this unjust law by demanding that our constitutional rights be upheld. This is the story of the man and his quest for the cause that you must read. From the Constitution of Tennessee, Article 11, Section 14, the intermarriage of white persons with Negroes, mulattoes, or persons of mixed blood, descended from a Negro to the third generation, inclusive of their living together as man and wife in this state, is prohibited. The legislature shall enforce this section by appropriate legislation. These despots violate our rights and ignore the law to prosecute potheads. They invent codes that they pull right out of their sorry asses to stuff down our goddamn throats. Look at this shit. I am being charged by these assholes with manufacturing pot when every idiot knows that pot is cultivated. But the enemies of freedom classify it as a drug, a Schedule I narcotic on par with heroin in order to pad their statistics in the drug war. 
they bust way more potheads than they do druggies. And they grab up way more pot than they do drugs. So they need us in their jails. They want us in their jails. Without potheads, their war on drugs would look as impotent, well, as the ballless wonders inflicting it on innocent citizens. Now, we're going to take your apple cherry. This is my weapon of choice when I fight the evil empire. I load up an apple and I go to war. Oh, look at that, how natural. A nature shot. You see that? There you go. I took your apple cherry. One lousy field of pot is considered to be millions in black market police state dollars. A beautiful field of cannabis that has value to people, society, and nature destroyed by the worthless infidels among us. The despots qualify pot as a gateway drug and a Schedule I narcotic in the same breath. Well, what drug awaits us beyond this imaginary gateway if potheads are already addicted to a Schedule I narcotic? And what about hemp? What fate awaits us beyond the gateway of hemp use? In 1969, the Marijuana Tax Stamp Act of 1937 was deemed to be unconstitutional by the Supreme Court because it failed to provide the people with a legal means to obtain cannabis. Rather than putting in place a regulatory system to make cannabis available to all at affordable prices in the free market, the government instead imposed an unconstitutional prohibition that criminalizes hundreds of thousands of citizens every year for a crime that they can't even define. So to end the reefer madness, we must make the enemies of freedom turn to page one of their legal books to test the criminal liability of a defendant in a pot bust. You know, the way they do for murderers. Everybody say it with me now. Actus reus non facet reum nisi mens sit rea. Mens rea, is that great? I don't even know how to say it. How do you say that? Mens rea. I know, right? The reason we can't trust doctors, priests, and lawyers is because they speak Latin and call what they do for a living practice. In plain fucking English, it means that the state must prove that an individual committed an overt act with the intent to do harm to a person, property, or puppy. It's Latin for Ollie Ollie Oxen Free. Furthermore, if one finds themselves charged with a crime, the accused has the right to offer consent as a defense. Let's say that I strip a woman, tie her up, spank her ass, and have three whole sex with her. It's not a crime if there's consent, at least by the time we're done. I most assuredly have consent to get high. I know because I'm the one that gave it to myself. And I have consent from the decent citizens who bring their hard-earned, heavily taxed dollars to me to get some weed. They actually thank me for putting myself at risk to keep the weed flowing. And believe me, they're welcome. Among other things, the state is violating my Sixth Amendment right to face my accuser. I ain't got one. No victim, no crime, no time must become the call of liberty. Look at this list of crimes. They've been the same for all time. We don't get to vote on legalizing criminal acts that are perpetrated upon citizens. Carjacking will never be recognized as an inalienable pursuit of happiness. Murder won't be upheld as a state right. There will never be a pro-rape movement. Damn it. It's like this. If someone is committing a crime, you can kill them to make them stop. Someone's robbing you, raping you, carjacking you, molesting your child, kidnapping you, trying to kill you and yours. You can take them out. Well, you can't blast a pothead in the commission of toking, dealing, or growing weed. As well, the state must uphold my 14th Amendment right to due process. Under the Full Faith and Credit Clause, courts must respect the ruling of other courts. 
If 18 states and counting offer legal remedies for potheads, all courts must follow suit. That's how Jim Crow ended. We cannot allow innocent potheads to be railroaded into kangaroo courts to face Bubba judges and Jethro juries where they are persecuted by some local code enforced by Barney Fife's on behalf of the village idiots. We must close the loophole that allows states' rights to usurp individual rights. States' rights was an institution supported by the Founding Fathers to appease the plantation delegation that demanded slavery then, now, and forever. From the onset of the Civil War onward, the federal government has marched troops against the practice of states' rights to protect American citizens who were being denied their civil liberties by local demigods who were imposing codes rather than enforcing the law and upholding the Constitution. Generations of presidents all rolled out troops and tanks to go below the Mason-Dixon line and drag the Confederate powers that were out of the darky ages. We must never allow states' rights to provide a loophole for the enemies of freedom when they engage in acts of unlawful fuckery against peeps. So, in order to end the siege, I must perform an intervention at trial because the legal system and its little piggies are sprung on drugs. I've got to make them go cold turkey so they can be fit to live among us in peace. Otherwise, we got to take them down and out like we do any other predatory junkie roaming the streets looking for a drug fix at the expense of decent society. But it's not just online. Peters has made a splash across our air before, representing himself in court cases involving pot. Grab your blunts, your doobies, your bongs, your pipes. Head to the nearest courthouse, the Capitol building, and smoke some pot. As it was, from slavery to the civil rights movement, from the Dred Scott decision that allowed a slave to sue for his freedom, to Loving v. Virginia that allowed interracial couples to marry beyond vote or opinion, substantive due process must be enforced as an absolute right as settled law so that no force on earth can gather to make others live in servitude to their whims and ideals. If pot is legal in other places, it cannot be illegal here. Therefore, we must stand against this political policy with peacefully relentless acts of civil disobedience and even some uncivil disobedience. These marauders need to know that we're through having our rights trampled, our property stolen, and our lives decimated by pot busts. This is my quest for the cause. I don't give a fuck about this jury's verdict. It is the judgment of history that will decide who among us spends all eternity in the shithouse. And it will be my honor to be there to flush these assholes once and for all time. May you and yours be safe from the enemies of freedom. Take care. All right, party peeps. It's time for you to go to thornpeters.com. That's T-H-O-R-N-E, peters.com. Check out his books, read his poetry, listen to his music, purchase his original designs on Stylewear in his gift shop, and enjoy pics of a wild time. All that and more is waiting for you at ThornPeters.com. That's T-H-O-R-N-E, Peters.com, the world's most e-fucking website. I love smoking pot with smoking hot women.